African masters. I'm starting to think that, as a matter of fact, that there was a certain element of oh. the spirit of Beethoven that was, uh, I hate to say it was very American, because that's not what I mean, but it was revolutionary, and I think it uh, really did come out of that time. Beethoven, of course, was the master of the music at that time. Well, we heard yesterday on the 4th of July programming, America's Beethoven, and one of your <laughs> great little pet composers, Matt, and that's uh, Anthony Heinrich... Right? Yes. Uh, the Beethoven of Louisville, or the Beethoven of Kentucky, they yes, called him. Yes, and, but he's, he was more modest. He said, I'm just a log, log cabin composer. But uh, we're back to the Moonlight Sonata, which certainly is one of the most evocative, simple movements ever composed. And on the last program, we were, we were a little upset. Well, you were upset that the work is so hackneyed. And... I was upset that so many literary connotations got in the way of really enjoying just a good Beethoven sonata, which Beethoven himself wished people would stop playing so much and get on to his other works. Mm -hmm. However, it is a masterpiece. And everything about it, the idea that Ludwig Rellstab, uh, the poet critic in Berlin, saw moonlight over Lucerne, and so became the Moonlight Sonata, also he was in love, as Beethoven he was usually in love, for three to four weeks at a time. Sometimes it would extend to nine weeks. Uh, Who would break off the relationship if indeed there oh, was one? The women. They couldn't stand him. Well, he was just absolutely too difficult, too absent-minded, too uh, dirty uh, in every way. He, he, uh, he'd, he'd come to an, uh, uh, um, an aristocratic dinner with um, half shaved one half of his face would be the other half not anyway even the dedication of the Moonlight Sonata has caused trouble because of all people it's dedicated to a 16 year old girl who he was desperately in love with I think the name is Giulietta Giacardi I'm not sure exactly of the pronunciation of her last name anyway she married a count and thwarted Beethoven and she studied with Beethoven so he was going to and once again you remember she has a title once again she was going to get a um, dedication and happened to have been I think opus 40 uh, opus 51 rondo the G major well anyway something happened and with the publisher and she got the moonlight which now made it even more romantic mm -hmm. if we really go into this moonlight sonata um, titles make music often. Mm -hmm. uh, the power of a title. The Tall Ships. That's a title. <laughs> Six million people. Okay. So, where was I there? Okay, so uh, she leaves and uh, now the world is thinking Beethoven's letter, which he locked in a drawer, possibly he forgot about it, uh, and it was called the immortal beloved and uh everyone said it's the moonlight sonata girl well then 19th century and this is a disgusting piece of literature i, I must <laughs> read because it shows it shows exactly how people wrote about music and this sonata well the story goes that one evening when wandering the outskirts of the city on one of those long solitary walks which were his only relaxation he chanced to pass an elegant suburban villa in which a gay social gathering was in progress. Someone was playing one of his recent compositions as he went by. His attention was attracted, and half unconsciously he stopped to listen. Stopped as luck would have it in a full flood of moonlight, was recognized from within the house in the laughing company of the guests. Giulietta Giacardi among them sallied out, surrounded and captured Beethoven, and fairly compelled him to come in and play for them. They insisted that he should improvise and should take for his theme the moonlight, which had been the cause of his capture and their unexpected pleasure. The usually reticent, intractable master, not to say morose, Beethoven at last consented. Under who shall say what subtle spell of Giulietta's voice and eyes, and seated himself and proceeded to compose the Moonlight Sonata. Who wrote that piece of trash? <laughs> now, this piece of trash was written by a pianist at the end of the 19th century by the name of Edward Baxter Perry, who was very, very um, well-liked. 
and traveled all over America giving lectures like this. This is the beginning of the music appreciation racket. I hate that racket. Now, this doesn't. This is this is the Moonlight Sonata. Uh, <laughs> that they're writing about. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm going to go on because I I would like to uh, point up the power of the title. In 1950, a psychiatrist writes. Nothing's changed at all about this work. Beethoven, the greatest musical genius of all time, sought by hundreds of women. <laughs> endured the bitter humiliation of Juliette's marriage to a young count, a dandy and a dilettante who believed himself an artiste. Beethoven's grief, love, humiliation, and rage were forecast in the Moonlight Sonata, a title and a song in the heart of every man, woman, and child who ever heard of music. Its first movement has all the moonlit magic of sexual love transformed into mood, ocean, night, sky, and universe. The psychiatrist writing, not uh, a romantic 19th century musician. Its first movement is, in sound, the silence of finding one's love, of that certainty, that fastening of oneself to the sacred body of the beloved, and that embrace. Da, da, da. It goes on and on. It's really incredible. I can't read it all. Uh, it's a good thing. I don't think I'd ever listen to the sonata it again. It gets more if you complicated it, yeah. and. All Beethoven said, Adagio sostenuto, sonata una quasi fantasia. He's breaking away from the sonata. Indeed, it's a marvelously evocative work. But this kind of, of literary tripe that surrounds the piece has destroyed so much of, of the musical value. Let me now, ask Beethoven you a question. was an absolute composer not a programmatic one, and hated titles with a passion. Well, uh, he still uh, did, or did he not uh, dedicate his third symphony to uh, Napoleon? Dedications are another not thing. Not quite the same thing. Yeah. I see. Okay, the thing I was actually going to ask you is that if you had to give it a title, and you had no choice, you wouldn't give it Moonlight, I suppose. Is there something else that evokes in you? Oh, of course I'd give it Moonlight. No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't want it to evoke anything but the exquisite movement of these uh, uh, triads in different inversions of the C-sharp minor chord with a very slight melody hmm. on top of those. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Now, what about the second and third movement? Where is the moonlight? Well, enough of this. I had to do this because the Moonlight Sonata should be classified as a work of art, not as, as literary pap surrounding it. Now we hear a very respected performer the late Wilhelm Bachhaus, and we'll hear the entire work.
beautiful performance with much to admire, especially a certain earnest quality that I like in Wilhelm Bachhaus's playing. It became sort of uh, very uh, thrusting in the last movement, and uh, that was reminiscent, strangely enough, of uh, the Glenn Gould recording, mm -hmm. I thought, anyway. Not we, spiritually as an overall piece. But, uh, right. On our last program, we heard the entire Glenn Gould performance, which was very, very fast and quite... Well, you liked it very much. I'm not sure yet. Well, this is WNCN New York, and we'll be back with another performance by the great Schnabel as soon as this message is over. Number 14 in C-sharp minor, which Beethoven called a sonata something like a fantasy. And he's already breaking the form apart, which would now enter him into his second period and the long journey of development in this possibly music's greatest intellectual idea, the Sonata idea. Arthur Schnabel will now play the Moonlight Sonata.
Arthur Schnabel, in a fantastically subtle performance of the first movement, don't you think? Mm-hmm. And uh, again, he the gets glowing it. sound, the fantastically right tempo for the slow movement, and then what is all of this bit that he has no technique <laughs> in the last movement, moving along beautifully. Now we have enough time for a third performance, and. Sirkin has been very neglected in these Beethoven sonata programs.
thus we now hear him in the Moonlight Sonata. Thank you. 